here again. It's so lovely to have you joining me again and in my little space on YouTube world. And I hope you're going to enjoy a little bit of time spent with me today. Uh, if you do enjoy it and you haven't already subscribed, then please do that. And um, there's lots of other places you can find me too. Uh, and you can just look in the description box below on Instagram and I have a little website. Anyway, let's settle into today. Oh, it's really cold outside today here. I live in the northeast of England and yeah, it really feels like winter out there today. We've already had a bit of snow and yesterday the paths were all just like sheet ice. Um, so it was definitely very cold. I think it's only about zero centigrade this morning. So I was just feeling like I wanted to be really cosy and hopefully <laughs> I'll help you to feel cosy too if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, yeah, it's probably the opposite, I should think. <laughs> you can just try and imagine what it's like needing blankets to keep you warm. <laughs> so actually, um, the first thing I'm gonna show you today is uh, the start of a new blanket. Yeah, well, before I do that, I just um, I was thinking back recently to when I first started knitting and I was trying to remember, I don't really have a clear memory of who it was that taught me to knit. Um, I think I have a vague memory of getting one of those tiny little knitting kits with the little short needles and some probably not really very nice yarn in it. Um, I think I probably got one of those, but the, my first proper memory of knitting is when I was a little girl and went to brownies and we were taught to knit a square, just a plain square. It wasn't anything fancy like corner to corner or anything like that. It was just knit up in lots of rows. A nice, easy thing for, for little children who are learning to knit. And... Yeah, so, uh, and I can remember that I did actually finish this blanket and little knowing that I was going to be such a lover of making blankets in my future. But I think I remember that I did 24 squares that were probably, you know, that kind of size. And I don't know that I sewed them together. Probably my mum did it because she she definitely, when, she, when they were all sewn together, she sewed a backing onto it. Uh, and I can still picture the fabric today. It was a very, I think it must have, uh, she must have taken it from uh, that kind of very slippery fabric that you sometimes have for a nightgown. You know, not a really cosy nightgown, but one of those thin slippery ones. Uh, and that was, it was, it was uh, sort of a creamy colour with little pink flowers on and little green leaves. I can remember that she stitched it all the way around and uh, sewed some buttons on it to uh, presumably so that the fabric was attached to the, the blankets. And I used that for a few years as a blanket for my dolls because I love playing with my dolls. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, well, then I went many years without making a, another blanket. And then a few years ago, when I learned to crochet, um, I, one of the first things I made was a blanket. I started with some tiny flowers and then, and then I went massive, you know, like a whole single bed size blanket. <laughs> so I've made quite a lot of blankets since, uh, since I first made that one. Um, and so, yeah, and I just found that I become a bit addicted to making blankets. Uh, lots of them I've given away to various friends and family. I'm gradually working my way through all my friends and family so that everybody will end up with a blanket for me eventually. So my new blanket that I've just cast on, um, I'm knitting it. Uh, um, I would say most of my blankets that I've made are crocheted. Um, and my new blanket though is a leftover sock yarn blanket. And here's my box full of leftover sock yarn from all the socks that I've knitted. And I have knit one uh, leftover sock yarn blanket, which you, if you've watched previous episodes, you will have seen it at some point, probably a couple of times. I really love it. Um, this is, I've just got it here beside me. It's this, it's this one where I did a corner to corner 
one so started just with two stitches and just added um you know just used up lots of bits of uh, sock yarn and i also had i also chose a um kind of a beigey color um yarn to knit every few rows just random randomly uh which i thought would kind of tie the colors together a bit more as well and then event and then when i finished it i crocheted the border around it and i do really love this um blanket and but it did take me rather a long time i think it took me about three three years of just occasionally picking it up and it became quite i have to say it was a little bit tedious sometimes i found it relaxing and sometimes I found it just a bit tedious because I had so many stitches where, when it was at its widest point. Um, I had just had so many stitches and it just took, I think it took me about three quarters of an hour just to knit one row. So so it was it was good to knit sometimes and, and other times I wasn't really very attracted to it. So I decided that um, I would knit another one but not in the same way. I decided to have a go at something I hadn't done before which is a mitered square join as you go blanket and this is how far I've got so uh, this is it so far. Uh, I stopped it here with this yellow one. Oh, this is the right side actually I'm showing you the wrong side. Oh, there we go and um, yeah so there we go. That's so that's going to be my new mitered square join as you go leftover sock yarn blanket. I'm really enjoying it. It's it's really uh quite good fun. Quite good fun. I'm going to I'm going to enjoy choosing which square to have next and which which you on to use for uh which square and um yeah, it's going to look very scrappy and homely and cozy, I hope. And um, I have one other blanket that I've made just with leftovers uh, that's not knitted. It's this one actually in it here that's keeping me warm. Uh, and for this this one, I used just leftovers of Stylecraft Special DK that I had used for various other blankets. It's probably the main yarn that I use for the crochet blankets because I'm a big fan of Attic24 website, Lucy's designs blanket designs are just brilliant and uh, I've done made quite a few of those so I am just going to give you a little break from my voice for a couple of minutes or so and take you outside into the damp and cold wintry weather uh, and um, you can just snuggle up if you need to uh, or you can Oh, enjoy the feeling of coolness if you're feeling a bit too warm. So here we go. Here's here's just a few little video clips of me being out and about recently. <laughs>
used to work full time as a primary school teacher. One of my absolute favourite things about the job was reading stories. I loved story time. I loved having a, a floor full of children all looking up and being, being wrapped in their attention to whatever I was reading to them. And although I don't miss going out to work full time, um, I really love working from home as a piano teacher and having time to do lots of other things as well that I didn't have time for before. But I do sometimes still yearn to sit and read stories. So I thought that maybe you would like me to read you a story today. That's what I'm going to do now. I have quite a large collection of uh, children's books anyway, but I do have a little section in my collection of uh, books that are related to knitting or yarn in, in some way. So I'm going to read you one today that's very appropriate to what I've already been talking about. And it's a story called The Story Blanket. And I just love so much about this book. It has something to teach all of us. It's not just a simplistic children's story. It's a, It has a deep meaning, really. So I hope you're going to enjoy listening to me reading this story to you. Deep in the snow-covered mountains was the tiny village where Baba Zara lived. The children loved to settle down on Baba Zara's big old story blanket to listen to her stories. There they are, there's the children sitting on the, on the blanket. One day, Baba Zara noticed there was a hole in Nikolai's shoe. When the children left, she decided to knit Nikolai some nice warm socks. But so much snow had fallen that winter that no one could get through the village to deliver wool. How could she knit socks without wool? Every question has an answer, said Baba Zara. I just have to think of it. She poured herself a glass of sweet tea to help her think. Before she had taken three sips, Baba Zara knew what to do. I will unravel a little of the story blanket and use the wool for Nikolai's socks, she said. Late at night, when everyone was asleep, Baba Zara trekked through the snow and left the socks on Nikolai's doorstep. Soon after, the postman found a scarf wrapped around his mailbag when he left to start his morning rounds. Do you know who made it? he asked everyone he met. But no one did. The schoolmaster was surprised to find a pair of warm mittens on the wood pile when he brought in wood for the school stove. Mrs Ivanov flapped the ravens from her wash with the new knitted apron she discovered beside her water pump. Before long, the grocer was wearing a new shawl instead of the moth-eaten one she used to have. The children had to sit closer on the blanket when they came for a story. There they are, snuggled together a bit closer. Day by day, the villagers grew more curious. Baby Olga received a mysterious new soft blanket and the butcher showed off the fancy woolen cap that covered his shiny bald head. The children were now squashed together on the very small story blanket. The confusion grew when the tailor's scraggly cat suddenly showed up, purring and grand in a snug cat coat. There was no blanket left to sit on. Dear. The villagers asked the mayor to help them solve the mystery. You know what Baba Zara always says, the mayor replied. Every question has an answer. When the children saw the socks, the scarf, the mittens, the apron, the shawl, the cap, the baby blanket and the cat in her coat, all together, they shouted, 
It looks like Baba Zara's old story blanket. But she doesn't have it anymore, said Nikolai. Aha, said the mare. Baba Zara used the wool in her blanket to make these. Now it's our turn to give Baba Zara a surprise. So, while Baba Zara slept, a few rows of wool were unravelled from every blanket in every household and left on Baba Zara's doorstep. Baba Zara was amazed when she opened her front door in the morning. She had never seen so much wool in so many colours. And on top of it all was a sign for your new story blanket. The next time the children went to Baba Zara's for a story, there was a colourful new blanket to sit on and a tale about a village where everyone shared with each other. As she hugged the children goodbye, Baba Zara noticed a hole in Alexandra's sweater. She wanted to knit Alexandra a surprise, but the snow was still on the hills and no wool to be had anywhere in the village. Baba Zara knew that every question has an answer. She looked at her new story blanket and smiled. So there we go. Isn't that a lovely story? I really like that. There's such a lot to say. So I think I'm going to uh, finish there today and I hope that I'll be back with you very soon and that you'd like to come along and join me. Uh, do make a comment below if, you would, if you've enjoyed today or if you want to ask me anything or just even to say hello. But until then, keep safe and keep busy and I will see you again very soon. Okay, bye.